Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Look at these bad boys. In this video I'm going to show you how to grow chilli peppers from seed to harvesting. I'll be growing them in a pot placed in a sunny location. Let's go. Our diary starts with sowing the chilli pepper seeds. Grab yourself a cell tray. It doesn't have to be this big, but it does need a hole in the bottom for drainage. Fill this up with compost. Use whatever you can get your hands on, and I wouldn't recommend spending more than you need to. The seeds really don't need much in their early stages. The only thing you must look out for are air holes. They will impact the growth of the seedlings, and it will mean that the compost will dry out quicker. To check this, push your fingers into each hole. I then top up with a little extra compost if required. This now needs to be thoroughly saturated with water to give the seeds the best chance of germination. There are a couple of ways to achieve this. Firstly, you can sit the tray in a tub, add some water, and allow the compost to soak for around 15 minutes. Or you can simply water the tray a couple of times, whichever is easiest for you. I'm growing the Anaheim variety of chilli peppers this year. As the seeds are a little larger than most, and we only need one healthy seedling per cell, aim to sow two seeds per cell. We'll thin out the weakest from each later. Carefully pop the leftover seeds away and they should keep until next year. Cover the seeds with a light layer of compost and gently press this down to give a good seed to soil contact. This will ensure the seeds don't dry out too quickly. Pop in your labels and then give the surface some water. This now needs to go somewhere for germination. Chili pepper seeds need quite a warm environment to germinate, so if you're getting these started early, when the frosts are still a danger, Keep these indoors. If it is warm enough, a grow tent or greenhouse will work well. Okay, so the sowing happened in week one. Checking at the start of week two, we can see nothing has happened yet. These seeds can take a couple of weeks to germinate. My turnips are doing fine though. Still nothing. My guess is it's still a little cool outside. If yours are indoors, they've probably already germinated. Week four and we have the start of germination. And it looks like we have quite a good germination rate. My cell tray is starting to empty as I transplant things outside this week. Make sure to not let the compost dry out and rotate the tray every few days if your seedlings are leaning to one side. Week 6 shows the seedlings growing on well and they're starting to grow more leaves. When the seedlings get to this size they're ready to thin and transplant. If yours are still indoors, take them outside during cloudy days so they can acclimatise to the colder environment before transplanting. Thinning is quite straightforward and all we're doing is choosing the strongest seedling per cell and removing the other. Grab yourself a pair of scissors and go through each cell one at a time. Choose the seedling which has the most leaves, the thickest stem and is growing straight. The others can be cut away at the base. Try not to pull out the seedling as it can disrupt the roots of the one that you want to keep though you can pinch out very small seedlings. What you'll be left with is one healthy seedling per cell. I'm going to be transplanting these into a pot. This is so that I can bring them indoors over the winter, which will give them a head start next year. Fill your pot with compost and mix in either manure or slow release fertiliser if you have any. Then, using a dibber, push a hole into the surface which is the same width and depth as the seedling's root ball. 
This is so we can simply drop the seedling into the hole without disturbing the roots. I'm going to be growing three plants in this one pot, though you should choose how many based on the size of your pot. Using a pencil, poke out the seedling from its cell using the hole in the bottom. As you can see, the roots have reached the bottom but have not yet started to loop around. This is the perfect time to transplant. Then drop that into the hole and do the same for the others. Very gently press each down a little into its hole. And I would recommend mulching this pot. I use hay, as it's left over from cleaning out our guinea pigs and it's filled with lots of nutrients. But I've also used bark and newspaper which both work well. Mulching keeps the sun off the soil surface, which means it doesn't dry out too quickly. This saves you time as you don't need to water as often. It can also look nice. And then give it a water. Newly transplanted seedlings need to be watered more often for their first week while they settle in place. Lastly, place this in a sunny location. The seedlings are settling in well and growing more leaves. This is a good sign that they weren't damaged during transplanting. You can see the stems starting to thicken over the next few weeks, and they'll be growing taller. Make sure to keep an eye on the compost to make sure it's not drying out. I would recommend watering heavily less often, rather than a small water more frequently. The plants are shooting up and the stems are thickening by week 11. And they're already quite tall by week 12. We can see some flowers starting to form by week 13, as you can see here. This is a good time to start using a liquid feed once a week to give the plant the nutrients it needs to develop its fruit. The flowers that were pollinated will now start to form chilli peppers, which will start to swell over the coming weeks. And the plant will also continue to grow new flowers. The chilli peppers will swell quickly, and the plant is using more water than normal at this time. It's also sunnier and hotter, which means we need to be even more careful about the soil not drying out. During very hot periods, you may need to water every day. I'm really happy with how these are growing. We've got lots of fruit, and lots of flowers. Thankfully, they're bothered by very few pests. If you have any aphids attacking your plants, as they are quite sturdy, a strong jet of water will knock them off easily, and won't damage the plant. By week 17, the plants look like they're slowing down a little. We can encourage them to flower more by harvesting the fruits, which are pretty much ready. and after 18 weeks we can start to harvest the largest fruits. Try to harvest equally across all of your plants, and to do so, grab a sharp pair of scissors and cut where the chilli pepper joins the plant, like so. Now these can be eaten and cooked as they are, though you can heighten their flavour by putting them on some kitchen paper on a sunny windowsill. They will then change to their distinctive red colour over a couple of days, and the flavour will develop further. I quite like the unripened look and taste, but you should cook and eat these the way that you enjoy. Once ripened, store them in the fridge, or you can freeze them just before they're ripe. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, I welcome feedback in the comments, and please add your advice for those who are looking to grow their own food. Do also consider subscribing, it really does help me make the best quality videos that I can. Thank you to those who have joined us since my last upload, and lastly, here are a few other videos which you may find interesting. Thank you, and happy growing.